folks welcome to the war of 1812 slideshow happens to be my most favorite slideshow or my most favorite war i know it sounds really weird but it is my most favorite war so let's go and enjoy all right so we have james madison he is president from 1808 to 1816 actually march 4th 1809 to march 4th 1817 that was my wife if you heard her sneeze <laughs> She promised she wouldn't talk. Anyway, um, anyway, back to James Madison. He is president for um, two terms, and um, we're going to be looking at some scenarios, and we're going to look at some Warhawks, and we're going to look at some Macon's Bill. It just rhymes with bacon. Um, War of 1812 is the big thing here, and we'll recap the Amendment uh, 12. All right, so... He does win the presidential election. Yes, he does. Uh, the 12th Amendment is in effect here. So what we have here is the wonderful world of you only have an electoral college voting for the president and vice president combined the same ticket. All right. Notice that James Madison won 122 electoral college votes. Go Jimmy. All right. And he is a Democrat Republican. As I said, the Federalist Party meant Federalist Party is pretty much dead after John Adams. So there you go. Uh, oddly enough, George Clinton is his vice president. If you notice, the third person running for president was George Clinton. Guess who his vice presidential candidate was? James Madison. Strange, I know, but whatever. Uh, so basically, they both wanted to be president, and they both agreed to be each other's vice presidents. That sounds pretty cool, I think. So all right so scenario number one uh you are president madison you have just taken office from thomas jefferson what do you do do you a keep the jefferson idea going do you b go to war do you c reopen trade with europe except england and france or do you reopen trade with europe except england and france but tell england and france whichever one of them stops being mean first will regain trade with the United States. So which of those four would you choose? Think about it, and I'll let you know what happens. So what does he do? He reopens trade with Europe except England and France, but tells them whichever country stops being mean first will regain trade from the United States. Yes, sounds very petty and sophomoric. So what is that called? That is called Macon's Bill Number Two. Yes, I don't even know what his number one bill was, but it's Macon's Bill Number Two. Um, it is also known as the Non-Intercourse Act. Okay, so all of you can start laughing. Ha ha ha! Non-intercourse. Yes, yes, yes. Um, what it means? No ships in my port. All right, so you cannot enter my port. Um, so whoever is nice to us first will trade with you again. France supposedly signs up with us uh, first before we even make this, but that could be a possible lie. So uh, just a little side note of history. All right, scenario number two. Uh, you are a member of Congress in 1811. You are tired of England causing problems with trade and impressing sailors to join their side. Yes, folks, impressment once again. What would you do? Would you A, declare war with England? Would you B, kill the Indians who helped England? Would you C, invade Canada? Or would you D, make new laws asking for free trade and sailors' rights? Again, trying to think of some positive and negatives for these things. Think, pause it if you have to, all that jazz. Mm -hmm. So what do they do? Ooh, look at that, we have a new guy. It's not Jim's Madison. No, it's Henry Clay there. All right, so what do they do? They do all four. All right, they declare war with England. They kill the Indians who helped England. And they invade Canada, as well as make new laws asking for free trade and sailors' rights. Yes, folks, Henry Clay. So, first of all, we have a new Congress who starts in January 1811. And they are known as the Warhawk Congress. They are the Warhawks. Their leader is Henry 
Clay. He is the new Speaker of the House. All right, so um, basically, they want free trade and sailors' rights. Why? What's really weird is these guys were from the South and from the West. Most of these senators and representatives had never even seen the ocean until they get out to like DC area. All right, so why would they even care? Basically, they are Southern plantation owners and the Embargo Act and impressment was killing their business. All right, so that's just tough. That's the way it goes. All right, so why is war declared? The War of 1812 is declared because of the Embargo Act. We're losing a lot of money. B, impressment. They are doing this impressment thing, which is crazy. All right, so this is another country impressing us. It's England, all right? But what's really weird is it actually ends two days earlier. We'll talk about that later. The British are arming Native Americans in the West and in Canada, even though they promised we'll never, ever, ever do that again. I promise. That's a lie. All right. And then, hey, guess what? Maybe we can get some more land, and we'll call it Canada. Did I ever tell you how Canada got its name? All right. Well, so true story. They put all the letters in a big, gigantic bingo bin, like a big circle thing. And they put all the letters of the alphabet, and they're like, circling, and shoot, 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 shoot. All right, and they pull out the first letter, and they say, C, A. Pull out the second letter, N, A. Pull out the third letter, D, A. Get it? All right, so, what is the war called? So, it is called the War of 1812. Some people call it the Second War for Independence because we're fighting England again. And others call it Madison's Little War because he was kind of small. He was five foot four, our shortest president ever. Now it's time to think. What do you know about the War of 1812? There should be a little space there for your jotting down this. And if you could just take a few minutes, put this video on pause, make me go like this. All right, and you will uh, then jot down your own thoughts, okay? All right, so here are some things um, that were going on with this war. Some problems with going to war with England. Now, the British are extremely experienced during this time, and they were fighting the French for many, many years. Another little guy, his name is Napoleon. He's actually not too small. He's actually about 5'8". Um, the U.S. has absolutely, positively no fighting experience. This is 1812. The last time we were in a war was 1776 to 1783. Most of those guys are dead. All right. So the U.S. has no experience. We have a weak Navy. The entire country is not even in favor of this. Federalists are not in favor of this. New England is completely not in favor of this. They think about breaking off. They actually start thinking about having their own country. They thought of seceding from America. Crazy idea. All right. And then we have riots in Baltimore. And there's protests because of those riots. Or there's protests and then there's riots because of those protests. Anyway, um, the natives... They actually get all like together and they organize themselves and they come up with their own new country basically and a new confederacy type. Um, so they organize all the tribes east of the Mississippi River to get rid of all the whites who live in the United States. And they do this through the help of two guys who happen to be brothers. Tecumseh and Tenskwatawa. Yes, folks, Tecumseh and Tenskwatawa. And they are two brothers who fight out west. They form the, the Tecumseh Confederation. I think we know who the true leader is in that family. Um, anyway, the prophet has visions of all the whites leaving and the Native Americans would then take over and all that stuff. Yeah, I think he didn't really have a good prophecy. Uh, anyway, I have a little quote there um, that was given to William Henry Hatt Harrison in 1810 by Tecumseh. So good uh, time to stop and analyze that, all right? William Henry Harrison, the guy they wrote that little quote to, uh, he is our future president number nine, and um, he only lasts for president for 30 days. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, his nicknames are Tippecanoe or Old Tip. He defeats Tecumseh and the prophets at the Battle of Tippecanoe in November 1811. But 
he doesn't kill them, he just defeats them. All right, and at the Battle of Thames, that's where Tecumseh and the Prophet are killed. That's in October of 1813. All right, he organizes a peace treaty with the tribes at the end of the war of 1812, and it's called the Treaty of Grenville, even though it's spelled Greenville, it's Grenville. So, uh, well, that is a treaty, and I'll tell you what they get out of that later. William Henry Harrison is president number nine, as I said. His nickname is Tippecanoe, I said, and old tip, Tippecanoe, and Tyler too is his vice president. All right, that's a little bit later on, but I figured it'd be good to talk about it now. John Tyler is also known as his accidency because he is the first president ever to, well, first vice president ever to take the presidency because of a death. All right. Andrew Jackson is a hero of the War of 1812, along with William Henry Harrison. All right, those two are the two main land battle heroes. Uh, he is future president number seven. So we have three presidents in this war. Um, John Tyler, he was president, um, but he was he was in the War of 1812, sort of, for like two months in Virginia, whatever. Uh, anyway, he is future president number seven. His nickname is Ajax in my world. Um, other people called him Old Hickory. So we have Old Tip, Old Hickory. And he is the hero of the Battle of New Orleans, which happened in January of 1815. Um, it occurred two weeks after the peace treaty was signed. Strange but true. Jackson leads a band of citizens to fight the British, and most of these citizens were French Creole people, and they were helped uh, by a man named Jean Lafitte. Um, the British lose 2,100 men. 2100 man all right we lose uh, seven seven six wounded the whole battle 30 minutes long yeah ajax is pretty good that way all right so other notable players oliver hazard perry yes folks there he is he is a naval hero we also have the president of the time james madison who is able to keep the country together we also have Francis Scott Key, he wrote something called the Star Spangled Banner. We'll talk about him a little bit later. We have Dolly Madison, who saves a lot of the culture of the Washington, D.C., the White House, because the White House is about to burn down. And then last but not least, the USS Constitution. It is also known as Old Ironsides. I think they like nicknames that start with old. Old Tip, Old Hickory, Old Ironsides. Cannonballs literally bounced off the sides of the of this ship. It's crazy. Uh, they would not penetrate it. It's just old iron sides. It's a wooden ship. It's still around the day up in Boston. Go visit it. So big idea questions. Did the citizens really want to go to war during this whole situation? Did they even support the war? Did the people of America want the country to fight in the War of 1812? It's all the same question. I'm just trying to reword it for you for those of you who can't think different ways. All right. And the answer is no. All right. Uh, not really. And reason why we're going to see Baltimore. Baltimore, totally against the war. They have riots. They have protests and people riot because of the protest. Um, it is considered a nest of pirates. The ship on the side, that's like a ship that you find down there in Baltimore. They're still there. Uh, merchant ships, the privateers, they carried their own weapons during this time and fought against the British. And they were actually better than our U.S. Navy at this time. Um, and they protected the city and they want the city to be safe. So they're like, yo, folks, let's like kill some British people. All right. The privateers even sank their own hulls. All right. Hull is the ship. Okay. They did not sink the masts, the big things up top, all right, just the hulls, all right, in the harbor to make it impossible for the British to navigate during the Battle of Fort McHenry, which is also known as the Battle of Baltimore. Some details about the War of 1812. Madison, he totally asked for war on June 1st, yo, 1812. Congress gives it to him on June 18th, 1812, all right. However, as I said earlier, the British ended in impressment June 16th, 1812, two days earlier. If they had Twitter back then, everything would have been fine. All right. But no, there's no communication at all. So it takes like, you know, 
eight weeks for them to finally find out like oh they're stopping oh that's great thanks all right um august of 1812 there was a big battle at the fort detroit not really all right basically before one shot is fired general hull of fort detroit totally surrenders and then he is court-martialed he is sentenced to death but madison's nice and pardons him all right the uss constitution is the big winner of 1812 um it defeats the hms guerrier um and the americans we attack york canada also known as toronto nowadays and we burn all the buildings okay other details the uss constitution all right and oliver hazard perry um they gained control in 1813 uh at the battle of lake erie and that is the turning point of the war in the northern part of america all right the battle of lundy's lane that ends the u.s attack on canada basically we were like you know what i don't think we're gonna win canada and so we stop um it's a bitterly fought battle and there is no true winner uh, but we basically you know stop attacking canada uh the battle of lake champlain also ends the british attempt to attack the northern part of america now we're all focusing in on the south which is also known as baltimore uh back then all right uh the british they land and they march to a place called bladensburg maryland they severely crushed the united states troops it's called the uh bladensburg races yes um the u.s troops they run all the way to washington dc not very smart all right the british actually follow them all the way to dc they burn all of the public buildings not the post office because you got to protect the mail all right um and as they uh burn dc they burn the white house down and everything like that then they they're like you know what maybe we should follow those troops and they so they start following those troops again outside of dc and believe it or not a hurricane hits washington dc and a tornado wipes out the troops that burn dc down basically uh they scatter them all over the place uh craziness wild wacky stuff going on the hand of god oh. all right so you have rain coming in and dousing the flames bonus points for america all right and we also have another little battle that goes on it's called the battle of fort mchenry or the battle of baltimore it lasts for 25 hours all right so battle of baltimore there on the left hand side we have a little mappy map of um baltimore this is fort mchenry right there all right and that flag is the actual flag um the star spangled banner flag that's it that's that's what's left and um yeah it's not too pretty but it's you know 200 and some odd years old so whatever uh we're gonna talk about baltimore a little bit more but that is where the uh how you say fort mchenry that is the tip of here's baltimore itself okay there you go good hopefully you see that if not i just drew on there for nothing all right so this is a painting of the battle of baltimore or battle of fort mchenry um these are ships all right they we're talking hundreds of british ships totally bombarding fort mchenry and you're like well why don't they get closer because the privateers sank their own ships yo all right and that gives you that kind of an idea there's the fort there's ships and they're lobbing them in doing the best they can this is an aerial shot of battle of fort mchenry that's not true it's just the modern day version of it um and this is what it looks like these things right here they're called ramparts ramparts or the ramparts we watch we're so gallantly streaming all right and there is the flag it's huge all right the flagpole double that size half of it is underground so like, oh, like that crazy all right so here is baltimore itself nowadays this is a 3d version of it so here is fort mchenry as i told you before now francis scott key he was the guy who was trying to uh free some prisoners on a prison boat boat and then he was like stuck on the boat so he couldn't leave he is actually all the way out in this area this is francis scott key bridge they call it that because that's where he was stationed basically and stuck on the prison boat he is not a prisoner all right get that in your head he's not a prisoner he's trying to release prisoners 
Baltimore itself is back in here, all right? Um, and then the British, they are able to get their boats all the way up to this point, all right? That's where 95 is now. Um, that's where they're able to get up to, and they're lobbing their bombs in, and they're bombarding it and doing the best they can, but they can't get any closer than here. Some do sneak all the way over here, but we bombard them over there too, and it's not a good situation. So uh, this is a major win for Baltimore. Major win. All right. Now, the treaty. Treaty of Ghent to sign, 1224-1814. Yes, Christmas Eve, but they didn't celebrate it that, like that back then. Um, all land is going to be returned to the original owners. So the whole war is pointless. All right. Um, all of the land goes back, except for, of course, the Native Americans who lose even more land with the Treaty of Grenville, which I talked about earlier. The U.S. gains total worldwide respect. Everyone's like, man, they can beat the British. All right. And the Army and the Navy, they are thoroughly established at, after this war. And we just keep on rolling. Uh, we do get a lot of roads, lots of canals uh, during this war for easier troop movements. And uh, we also get, at the end of this war, a demilitarized zone, a DMZ, between Canada and the United States. We stop having to worry about troops hanging out up there. We're like, yo, let's just be friends, man. And they are totally peaceful and we don't do anything until after 9-11 when we're like, hey, you need a passport. So... And I think that's about it. So hopefully you learned a little bit more about the War of 1812. Bye.